This is the solution to quiz eight. Okay, so then we're given, in part A, we're given two functions. Uh, the domain of the quotient function h over k, well, this will be the intersection of the domain of h and k. So that will be 4 to 28 intersect 3 to 12 and then also intersect where uh, the denominator function is not 0 so intersect <coughs> where k of x is not 0 so k of x is 0 at 6 so it means so what this means is this, that intersection, and then and not x is 6. So we'll compute this intersection and then take away x is 6. <coughs> so this intersection can be computed in the following way. So 4 to 28. We'll make one number line and 3 to 12. Make another number line. So 4 will be here. So 4, 28. then 3 to 12 so we want everything that is that where we have a red point and also a green point so that means from 4 to 12 but remember it's 4 to 12 and not 6 <coughs> so the domain <coughs> quotient h over k is 4 to 12 and not 6, so that would be 4 to 6 union 6 to 12. <coughs> and the expression, the simplified expression, that would be, so h <coughs> over k evaluated at x, well that would be x, x squared minus 36 over x minus 6, but x squared minus 36 can be factored into x plus 6 times x minus 6 and then over x minus 6 and then those cancel to get just x plus 6. <clears throat> okay, so then part B, the domain of P. Okay, so that's all of the x values for, for which P is defined. So P is not defined back here, uh, and P is not defined up here. So this is the first place where p is defined here at negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So we have a gray point starting at negative 6. And then we continue to have a gray point all the way until 4. Okay, similar, similarly for q, we want to know everywhere we have a black point. So that would be from negative 4. x is negative 4 is the leftmost. And then negative 4 all the way until 
six. So the domain is of the product now is going to be everywhere we have a black and also a green point. <coughs> uh, sorry, gray point. So that's from negative four to four. Of course, that is the intersection of these two. So now P plus Q evaluated at negative four. Okay, so then that would be P of negative four plus Q of negative four. P is the gray, so P of negative four, that would be uh, negative one. And then plus Q of negative four, that's the black one, so negative three, so plus negative three, so that would be negative four. So P circ, Q evaluate at six, so that's P of Q evaluate at six. Well, Q evaluated at six, six is the black one, so that would be X is one, two, three, four, five, six. So the output is four, so that would be P of four. And so now I want to know what, do I, what output do I get if I give four as input to the gray function. So that would be one, two, three, four. This is the output, and that would be two, four, six, eight. So the answer is eight. And so now we have Q circ Q at two. So Q evaluated at Q of 2. Q is the black function. So Q of 2 is 0. So this would be Q evaluated at 0. And then Q evaluated at 0 is 1. And that's the answer to question 1. <coughs> question 2a, the main idea is this is that we're going to take the standard parabola y is x squared and y is x squared looks like this and we're going to transform it so that it looks like this so there are three transformations that occur here. So this transformation makes the plot go up by pi. This bit of the transformation will make the plot go left, no, sorry, right. This part of the plot, just the three by itself, will make the plot undergo a vertical scale of three, and this part of the plot just that negative will make the plot undergo a vertical reflection. So taking those things together y is negative 3, x minus 4 squared plus pi will look like the following. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. This point right here, the vertex of the parabola, will move in this way. So it'll go up, 
pi and right 4. So it'll go up pi, 1, 2, 3, and a little more, and then to the right by 4. So that vertex is now at um, 4 comma pi. And then it's flipped upside down and stretched. So something like this. So that's what the plot looked like. So it's increasing uh, on that bit, that's to say to the left of 4, and, uh, and it's decreasing to the right of 4. So it's increasing from negative infinity to 4, and it's decreasing on 4 to infinity. <coughs> So now determine if this function is even, odd, or neither. <clears throat> so remember that the definition of even says that g of negative x should be g of x, where odd is g of negative x should be negative g of x. And then neither means neither one of these things is true. So now let's check both of let's check g of negative x. So g of negative x, that'd be 5, and then negative x to 4, minus 6, negative x to 2, and then plus 9. Well, because this exponent is even, it squashes that negative. So this would be 5x to 4, and then minus 6. And then because that exponent is even, it squashes that negative. So that would be x to 2, and then plus 9. But this, that's just g of x. So therefore, we've established that g of negative x is g of x, and therefore g is even. OK, so 3a, the x-intercepts, that's algebraically when y is 0. So what we want to do is we want to solve the output uh, is equal to 0. So f of x is equal to 0. So that's 3 absolute x minus 7 plus 9 is equal to 0. So move the 9 to the other side, 3 absolute x minus 7 is negative 9, so absolute x minus 7 is negative 3, dividing both sides by 3. And so the question is, is well, what inputs to the absolute value would give you output negative 3? And the answer is none. So that means that there's no, no intercepts, no x-intercepts. So that knowing transformations, that should be expected because uh, what this is doing, so what that is doing, that's moving the plot to the right, g h t by 7. What this is doing. That's moving the plot up 9. And what this is doing, that's making the plot undergo a vertical scale. 
So that means that if we take the absolute value function, which does have an intercept, and then if we move it right 7 and up 9, if we move it right 7 and up 9, then that means it'll look something like this, which of course has no x-intercept, so that's expected. So now the y-intercepts, This is when x is equal to 0. So that means that we want to plug in x is 0. Well, that is 3 uh, multiplied by 0 minus 7 in absolute value, and then plus 9. Well, 0 minus 7 is negative 7, absolute value of which is 7. So that would be 3 times 7 plus 9, 3 times 7 is 21, plus 9 is 30. And therefore, the y-intercept is at 0, 30. Okay, so now plot the following function. This can be achieved by just plugging in uh, a bunch of values. So let's do that. So how about at x is 0? At x is 0, that would be 4 times 2 is 8, and then minus 5 is 3. So the point 0, 3. At x is 1, that would be 5 times 2 is 10. Minus 5 is 5. So at 1, it's 5. Uh, at 2, that would be 2 plus 4 is 6, times 2 is 12, minus 5 is 7. And then, uh, how about at 3, that would be 3 plus 4 is 7, times 2 is 14, minus 5 is 9. So that would be 2, 4, 6, 8, 9. Okay, so now going the other direction. Negative 1, so negative 1 plus 4 is 3, times 2 is 6, minus 5 is 1, so that would be here. And then <coughs> negative 2, so negative 2 plus 4 is uh, 2, times 2 is 4, minus 5 is negative 1. And these points will continue going down until we get to negative 4 because that's the smallest it can be. So at negative 4, at negative 4, this would be negative 4 plus 4 is 0, times 2 is still 0, and then minus 5, so that would be down here, at negative 5. And this is the pointy spot of the absolute value, and it will, it will proceed going up after this, so up and to the left after this. So how about at negative 5? Negative 5 plus 4 is negative 1. The absolute value of that is 1, times 2 is 2, and then minus 5 is negative 3. So that would be here. And then they continue going up and to the left. So the function looks like this. And that's the answer.